guys, I'm Rita and in this episode I will guide you through free agent accounting software tutorial. And the best way to represent or guide you through would be if I would take on a real business role, all right? And I will do so. So in this episode I will be a sole trader who makes and sells chocolate. So I have my own chocolate business. First things first, let's register on free agent and add bank accounts. Okay, let's register on free agent and add bank accounts. So firstly, I will quickly look on plans and pricing. So I will be sole trader and I want to start my 30 day free trial. Let's fill in details, so name, surname, email address, confirm email address, my business name, my business type, and of course, password. So let's fill in details. Okay, let's confirm. So if you decide to change your business type, you can still click on this drop down list and select the one which is applicable. So in my case, I have UK sole trader business type. Password. Mm. Oh, it's too short. Mm. Okay. Um, if you want to join mailing list, click yes, please. Otherwise, I'm not interested at the moment. So, and click get started with free agent. Okay. So I have four steps or stages still to go through. So business details, accounting dates, VAT details and banking setup. So let's start with business details first. Here I need to select business type. So I have selected sole trader and there is a note, this can't be changed later. So I, ha I am sole trader and I will stick to my sole trader business type. Business category, there's lots of categories to choose from. For example, fashion, uh, builder, uh, if you are um, in retail, utility, select the one which is applicable to your business. In my case, I will go for food and beverages, okay? My business name is Rita K. Let's add in my business address. I'm based in, let's say, London, and my postcode is this one, okay? Country is UK, United Kingdom, and if you have business phone number, you can provide it here as well. And click Save and Continue. Next stage or step is accounting dates. So that's, this is when uh, my financial year or business start date starts. So for example, um, if officially I started my business before 2022, I can select date and choose it. I will set up as my business have started in this tax year, so from 6 April 2022. And when my first accounting year ends, it is on 5th April 2023. What day do you want to keep your books from? And I will keep from 6th April 2022. As I said, if your business started in previous year, click dates when it started. So for example, 6th April 2021, that would be previous tax year in case. So in this case, I will leave from previous tax year. Okay. And click. Oh, okay. Before we move to next stage, we need to also decide which basis you are using. So either you use traditional accrual basis or cash basis. In my case, I have cash basis accounting for my sole trader business. Okay. Save and continue. Third step is that details. I'm not reg registered for VAT, but if you are, select one of applicable service, optional so that you are registered or 
registered or you are applied for VAT registered business status. So if you click registered, you will need to fill in details when you registered, uh, what is your what registration dates and etc. So once you fill in these details, click save and continue. In my case, I'm not registered for VAT purposes. I will click save and continue. Okay, and fourth step is bank setup. So in my case, I have business bank account as well as credit card account. So business current account, if you tick this box, this account contains personal and business transactions, you will be not able to pay expenses from free agents. So be careful about this option. Later you can deselect it if, if you um, will be not able to mark personal expenses is paid. So in my case, I have this just purely business related business account. Okay. Bank name. I will have Rita's bank account number. Okay. And sort code is okay. Opening balance. I have thousand pounds as opening balance. And once you have filled in details above, click save and finish. Okay, so now setup has been complete. There's pop up message, but I want to also add my credit card account to add credit card account. You need to go banking, click on bank accounts and on right corner. There is new bank account. Oop, I think so. There was credit card account as well. New. Yeah, new credit card account. Sorry, account name. I will have um, business credit card, uh, currency, I have pound sterlings, but if you have in different currencies, you can select from drop down list, account number, last four digits, okay, status is active. And you can also select if this is personal credit card. If it's personal credit card, as I said, expenses, what will be recorded under this section, you will be not able to mark as paid. So be careful. Okay. Opening balances. If you have opening balance on credit card, add it here. And when you have added information on above sections, click create new account. So now when I go to bank accounts, I have two accounts. I have my business current account and my business credit card. So now we have registered on free agent and added our bank details. Preparation is key. And I need to make sure that I have chocolate, what I can melt, as well as I have seeds and nuts and any other um, ingredients what I want to add in my chocolates. And likewise with accounting software, I need to make sure that system is aligned before I start to issue invoices or record transactions on accounting software. So before I start to melt my chocolate, let's go through settings section first. Okay, guys, let's go through settings section first. To access settings, we need to go to right hand side and under in my case, under my business name, in your case will be under your business name, you can access settings section. Here we have four sections, what we will need to cover or what you have available to amend and adjust or align in line with your business needs. So top section is my company. In my company, you can amend company details. For example, if you need to change address details or contact details, you can change it here. Also, you can add company logo if you have one here, export all data, delete account and reset data. That means that start from scratch. So whatever information you have added, you will, you can delete and then it will be like having white blank paper sheet and you start from scratch. Let's go back to this section. There is users. So under user section, you can invite additional user to your free agent account. So in my case, I am the owner of this account, but I can add new user. In that case, add email address, name, surname, and there is optional also sections like for national insurance, UTR number, date of birth and role. For example, if that is an owner as well, employee or an accountant. Okay. 
if you have mileage for this employee then you can add a mileage opening mileage sir next one is user permissions and at this moment this person would have a full access until stage eight so this user will have no access to file self-assessments or VAT returns, post journals, and also user export all data features. But all other sections like viewing reports, performing banking, um, recording supplier bills, issuing invoices, estimates, and files, projects, contacts to manage those sections, as well as manage time and money. So. If you want to change access, for example, you just want this particular staff member uh, to have whoop, to have only access up to invoices. So that person can issue only invoices. So either you can hover above that number, for example, here, that person would have all this green access, including create and edit bills. If I want just to give access up to issuing sales invoices, quotes and estimates, then I need to move this until four number. So this team member will have no access to record supplier invoices or bills, perform banking functions as well to access any accounting features like reports. Plus, not even talking about filing all reports like self-assessments and tax returns. So this is a way how you can manage uh, user permissions uh, or your team member uh, access on um, free agent. Okay, so let's go back to settings section. So that's under users. Next one is date format. If you want to change date format, there is four options for you to select from. So in my case, I want uh, two date numbers, two month and four years. So this is my format. Once you select, click save changes. Also, there is communication preferences section. Here you can select and enable options like if you want to show links to partner products or services and etc. So you can uh, align with uh, your your needs, how you how you want to communicate out. Okay. If you don't want, for example, receive bounced email notifications, that just deselect and save changes. Okay. Next section is free agent URL. If you need, you can access there. And plus you can have support access. So you can grant access to a member to T uh, free agent team to have access to your account. Okay. Next section is emails, invoices and estimates. So here you can under sending emails, you can manage the email addresses, what you're sending. So for example, you can add a new sender email if required, and you can also custom email domains here in this area. Okay. So next email templates. When you are on email templates, you need to, um, save templates. So for example, new invoice templates, this is a drop. And if you don't want to change anything else, remember to save new invoice template. If you don't save your invoice, when you will try to distribute invoice out, it will be blank email and blank email box, and you will need to manually type something in. So in settings, save templates, uh, samples. So you have already pre-filled details. Okay. It's the same about invoice reminders, invoice thank yous and new estimates. So I will say for new estimates as well. Okay. There is. Okay. So let's go back to settings. So that is about email templates, price lists here. If you have uh, goods or services that you are selling quite often, you can already create your price list. So for example, I'm selling um, chocolate. So I will uh, chocolate S and it is based one number of units. So you have multiple options. So if you are trading your time in days 
weeks, months, years, or for example, in hours, you can add actually quantity and add information. So for example, if I provide monthly subscription fee, so I can add one month and add price. Yeah. So you can create your pricing list, which you can easily later uh, use to when you're creating invoices. So for example, in my case, I have small, medium and large chocolates, what I'm selling. So I will say number of units, one unit, and I will write a chocolate. small and my price is not 0.50 and I will put zero and create another another one uh, I have also medium side size chocolates so the same one number of units One fifty. Select VAT status. I will just select zero as a VAT status and add new price list item. And I have also chocolate large size. So these are the products. So you can select the units or you can select the products how you want. Um, and I will have chocolate large. And these ones are going for three pounds. Okay, create another another one. And I have also delivery charges, uh, so I have shipping. So I will call that one as a post. I will have one, and I will put services, and I will call this one a shipping, and I have. Uh, 2.99 okay and I will select accept and create so this is a way how you can create a price list that you can use later to easily actually pick up and create supplier in customer invoices okay so let's go back to settings and last one is theme gallery so you can select your invoice template so you can go for simple horizon whichever you choose to uh, use for your invoice template. So for example, I will use this modern type and where is like customer name on left hand side and there would be my company details and bank details. I kind of like this one. So I will say that I want to use this theme. So you can select one of available or you can create your own template if you want. Okay. so. That covers second section, emails, invoices and estimates. Next one is about accounting, tax and VAT. So we already set up our accounting dates, but if we need to change anything, you can come to this section and amend accounting dates, start date and accounting basis if you want to change. Okay. Then there is initial tax data. So any losses brought forward. So if you have used previously any other accounting software, so your business was trading, if you have any losses or assets or whatever for your corporation tax purposes, this is where you can go and add that information as well as if at a later stage you got to, as a VAT registered business, you can come here and add VAT registered business information. And also if you have deregistered, there is another option after our pre, like when we registered, we had no option to select deregistered. Okay. So if you are registered, fill in details here and save changes. Okay. Let's go back. Accounting categories. Okay. This is, uh like chart of accounts so all codes what you will use to map your eva income uh, revenue sales or your expenses like cost to your business these are all your um, codes available on system so for income i have only one code called sales but if i want to separate for example my product sales uh, online from uh, customer orders i can add a new code by clicking add new and select what I want. Either I want income or expenses or cost of sales. So in my case, I will have income category. I need to select a description. So I will call sales and I will call chocolate. Chocolate. 
chocolate bars okay create and add another category and second category i will have sales and custom orders okay so all those categories are added here as you can see under income and of course we can edit and in that case also if we decide delete this uh, code if you will not use it going forward okay so there is admin expenses it's quite a long list if there is one of the expenses codes not available you can come here and actually add a new code for example if there is something uh, there is insurance but if you want to separate business insurance from vehicle insurance then you can of course add new expense code cost of sales got five codes if you want separate cost of sales you can do in the same way add new code these are the codes what are available under cost of sales to select then there is capital assets and subgroups as well provided below current assets liabilities and equity so all these last four categories are part of balance sheet and these three categories or sections are available on profit and loss statement okay so this covers a section about accounting categories if you want to lock accounts so for example if one month finished and you don't want to do any changes or someone by mistake entering something in previous periods you will be able to lock account to a certain date so click on account uh, locking select date and save changes until which date you want accounts to be locked okay next next subsection is construction industry scheme so if you are part of cis and you need to do reporting as part of cis you can enable this scheme here and last section is security so it's all about your free agent access uh, who accessed when access from what devices is your account has been accessed and etc and plus you can also enable two-step verification if you wish to so this section covers now settings and i'm ready actually to start record my transactions so where is my chocolate recipe i have jane lucy events rent so I've been keeping all my customer and supplier details as well as any notes of my chocolate recipes and it's kind of start to get messy in my notepad. So let's add customers and suppliers on contact section on free agents so I can find my chocolate recipe. Okay, here's my notepad and let's add contacts from my notepad to uh, contact section on free agent so on top header there is contact and to add new contact either we can create very first contact from here or click on add new contact there okay so we have two free sections to fill in first section is contact details next section is address about this customer or supplier and then there is invoicing options relating to this particular customer or supplier okay so let's start from the top i know that there is three stars like i mean three so three fields with stars and often it means that they need to be filled in but in this case if i have just organization then you do not need to fill in first name and last name but if i have an uh, individual then i will fill in details for first name last name and leave organization blank okay so first i have a uh, lucy lucy green i will leave organization empty i will add email address okay i'm adding my email address so i can show you how invoices or estimates will look like when i will distribute okay if there's different billing email address can be added there okay if you have phone number or mobile phone number you can enter in these two fields next one is invoicing address so i will have green street for lucy town i will have green town and okay and it's uk 
Next one is invoicing options. Lucy is my customer, so my terms are actually zero days for someone who purchases online, so they need to pay immediately. And if you want to use contact level email settings, you can select there and invoice sequence, I, you can select there as well. So that means that every cust if that customer will have multiple invoices, so it will go in a sequence to this particular customer. I will just leave, um, I will not select them, I will leave, I will allow system to create sequence of invoice numbers. Okay. And check this box if you want invoice to show contact name as well as organization name i will just deselect it's fine to have just uh, person details if there is a VAT registration number you can add it here and also language can be changed if you wish to okay i can create new contact create and add another this is what i will go for because i have next one in my list events limited okay now i have events limited I will leave blank for first name, last name. We'll use the same email address. Uh, let's copy billing email as well. And the same way, fill in invoicing address and invoicing options. Okay, so I have added my Lucy and Events Limited. They are my customers. So as you noticed, on... Um, free agent, there is no separation between customers and suppliers. Only when we will issue invoices or record invoices, that's when we will separate if that contact is our customer or supplier. Also, there is occasions when our customer can be also our supplier and vice versa, right? So now I have supplier rent limited. So I need to uh, add supplier information here as well have no address and payment terms are giving seven pay days of payment terms and create and add another one so i will add a couple more suppliers to list from my this list as well as couple customers so fill in details one by one okay to access my contacts i will click on contacts and here i can even click on letters and then i will be brought to my list or i can actually select list option and i can see all my contacts there so this is a way how i can add contacts on free agent And I found my recipe. So as I have found my recipe, let's put my oven on and let's melt some chocolate. Okay, oven have warmed up so I can actually put my chocolate into melt. Okay, so this is particular project for an anniversary. The client asked me to create the 20 bags of uh, chocolate with mixed seeds, nuts and raisins. And I have decided to actually create a separate project on free agent accounting software. And also I'm able to track a time for this project and invoice for time spent accordingly. Plus another customer have requested me to send a quote or you could call estimate or proposal for another order. So let's have a look on next section on free agent called work. And first three subsections regarding uh, projects, time tracking and estimates. So while I'm waiting, while my chocolate is melting in oven, let's create a project for these 20 bags of um, special chocolates with seeds, nuts and raisins. So to create a new project, I need to go to work section and there is option to create a new project. So click on projects and here I can create a first project. If you have already available projects, you can actually import those by clicking here. So create my first project and now I can select a contact 
leave a current from my drop down list or add a new contact. In my case, I will add a new contact. This is for Josh. Okay. And I need to add a project name. So in this case, we'll have anniversary. Uh, chocolate bags okay that's a project name it's active if there is contract or purchase order number it can be added here otherwise you can leave blank okay and currency can be changed if this is for different uh, country maybe so you can change it there and also we can set a budget budget for hours days or pounds in my case i have a budget in pounds and this budget is based on maximum of 500 pounds okay hours per day i would say i have 7 30 hours and normal billing rate i have 15 pounds per hour okay when we click on more options here i can select is employment under ir35 and when it's starting date and ending date if it's applicable okay so once we have filled in details about this project we can create new project okay so i have created project for anniversary chocolate bags and now i need to put timer on because my chocolate is melting so i can add time tracking i can add a date so i will select on 11th for Josh, I can add a task. So my task will be um, melting chocolate. Okay, create new task. And this is billable task and I will cre click creating task. Okay, I can add more details if needed. So I can say Okay, and I can click start timer. Okay, now this tasks, task is running timer at the moment. And when I will actually finish melting my chocolate and doing, doing um, all process uh, regarding this particular task, I can stop timer if needed. Okay, so I had another project and that project is for um, for events limited and that's quite big order it's for 1200 pounds so let's create an estimate for it uh, because i need to first send to events limited to get their permission or approval so under work we click on estimates and i can click on create your first estimate here i can actually from drop down list select estimate quote or proposal so in my case, I will have a quote actually for this job. Contact, it's for events limited. That's for getting my uh, chocolates as a favors or small thank you uh, chocolates, what will be provided for apparently quite big uh, wedding uh, event happening over the end of August. Okay, so project, there is no project at the moment. So, um, at this moment, I'm sending just a quote out. Reference is 001. An estimate date is I will keep 11th of July, pound sterling, and I can add additional text if I wish to. Under more options, I can add a discount and client contact name. Okay, click create new estimate and we will be brought forward to actually like template of an invoice. Here, I can add estimate item by clicking on green button and here I can add details. So if I select autofill from your price list, I can select my items, what I have already added on my price list under settings section. So for example, I have small chocolates and there is quantity of 200 requested for small chocolates and I can select 
under which income category I want these ones to allocate. And this will be a custom order in my case. Okay, I can create and add another one. And also I have request for medium sized chocolates for 100 of units. It's the same. I will select income category as custom orders. If you don't have uh, added different categories, just keep it as a under sales section. Okay. And create and finish. So now I have added chocolate small and chocolates medium. I need to add also uh, work on what I will work. So I will have design. Uh, I will have um, also provided um, printing services. So I can add all this onto my quote to this particular customer. So I will have one service and I will call this one design. That would be design of the paper where I would wrap um, chocolates in. Okay. And this would cost 250. Create and add another one. I will have a, a one service, which would be printing to print on patent paper and etc. That would cost for all, all 300 units will be in, I will say 300 pounds. Uh, I will click create and finish. So we are at 800 pounds. So I have designed printing actual chocolates, but then I also will spend time on wrapping. So that would be my time on wrapping and making sure that those chocolates are nicely presented and put in boxes for them to be like to be delivered. So I will add estimate item of uh, one service and it will be wrapping. And that would cost um, 350. Okay. And then I will have, of course, also uh, shipping. I know that I had post here for 2.99, but in this case, it will cost 50 because quite a lot of chocolates which need to be delivered, custom order and create and finish. So this is a quote for 1200. So that's how we can add information and details. If you want to delete, click on that cross. Or if you want to delete line and add more information, we can click edit. Also, when I click uh, scroll a little bit up, I can also deselect show income categories and there is no income category showing below all these details. Okay. So once I have added all this information, at the top section, I can save this one as a, uh, as a PDF file. I can e email out, edit, delete, or I can duplicate this estimate, add a new estimate, create project from this estimate and change theme if I wish to. That means change template. In my case, I will send by email and there is my saved template. Once I'm happy with all information, I can click send email. Below, when you scroll below that email, you can see how uh, this quote will look like. And I will click send out. Okay. So estimate has been sent and under more, I can actually create project from this estimate project name. I will have, um, wedding. I will call it just wedding and I will put events limited in brackets. Okay. And I can add 1,200. Uh, okay, that's not per day. Create project and tasks. Billing rate. Create this one. Okay, yeah, I will just create project and tasks. And I can click create project. Okay. So now, when I go to work and project, I have two projects, anniversary chocolate bags and wedding for 1,200. Okay. And when I go to estimates, I can see my estimate for 1,200 and it's still in open process. So, oh, okay. And when I click on time tracking, sorry, there is still time running for my melting chocolate. Okay. I will go and check how my melting chocolate is going on, but this is a way how we can add projects how we start time tracking, as well as how we can issue estimates and uh, quotes to our customers if required.
Okay guys, chocolate half melted. So let's take my gloves off. It's a moment. And let's take out my chocolate. So be careful with this one. Okay, so my chocolate is melted. Let's put this one there. Now I need to mix it. Okay, let's put in glass chiller to cool down before I break this chocolate in pieces. Okay, I have placed chocolate in the fridge. And before I actually get my chocolate out and pack up, I need to get to shop and get more ingredients. So how we can actually add supplier invoices on free agent accounting software. Let's have a look on next section called bills. Also, I have a couple other bills like phone bill and rent bill, what I need to add as well. So how I can add supplier invoices on free agent to add an invoice we need to go to bill section and here we can create my very first bill so first bill what i want to add is my rent bill click i will select from my drop down list but if you need to add a new supplier click on add a new contact and you can fill in details of this new um, uh, contact Okay, we'll click cancel. Let's create my first bill. So it's for rent. My rent invoice number is rent 2022.07. And my bill date is actually 30th of June. And due date is on Seventh July. Okay, currency is pound sterling. So there is no comment, and this rent doesn't apply to any of projects. So I will just uh, leave blank. If this supplier invoice would recur, I can also set up a recurring and select how often this recur. For example, rent bill often recurs monthly, so I can actually set up as a monthly if I wish to save time. In my case. I will not set up as a recurring invoice uh, because I have every time I have separate invoice and I need to actually um, add a different supplier invoice number there. Okay, I can select the file. In this case, I have rent, rent, rent bill is there. Okay, so I touch my rent bill. I can add uh, add description if I wish to. Otherwise, just leave blank. It's op optional. Click save and continue. And here we can add an information, so adding bill items. So I have one bill item and it is for rent. So select cost group. So this is for spending category. So where you want to see this um, supplier invoice to be shown on your reports. Details, rent, I will say monthly, July 2022. Quantity, I have one and it is one month and i have 150 pounds rent okay what rate i will select exempt okay save if you have another line to add add bill item okay i can still edit this line or i can delete okay so once you have added this um, information uh, you can edit or I can add another bill. So this is recorded already. So I will add another bill. In this case, this will be phone bill. Uh, phone limited. Reference, I have phone. Okay. And it is dated 29th and due on 6th of July. 
okay uh, there is no project and it will not recur in my case i select a um, copy of invoice and i will click save and continue in the same way i will add bill item and in this case it will be phone bill somewhere should be so mobile phone okay and i can add information here so it will be Okay, and say okay so now I have added my phone and rent bill and I need to add actually uh, supplies purchased from chocolate limited so I will need to add a new contact so I will have organization name chocolate limited reference okay and bill date is 30th of June and it's actually due on 1st okay pound sterlings that's fine and I can select a file so I should have chocolate limited invoice there save continue and I can add information so in my case this falls not under expenses but this falls under costs of sales so I will have uh, costs of sales directly attributable to my um, making my uh, sales so it's to chocolate side okay so under details I will add description so I have um, ingredients quantity I will call a one and I will call um, products okay and it is I purchased 445 pounds uh, I will just select out of scope. I'm I'm not selecting VAT and etc. And reason is because uh, I actually um, I'm sole trader who is not VAT registered, so I don't pay attention to VAT. I'm going for full amounts. Okay, if you are VAT registered, select correct VAT rate. Don't ignore it. Yeah. Okay, and I will save. And this have added information there. I can edit or I can delete line. Also, I can download uh, attachment here or view it if needed. Okay, so if I have paid for this one, so for example, I have paid for a chocolate limited and I have paid for it on, uh, I think so, fifth. Okay, so I can mark uh, this invoice as paid. So I can click add a manual payment and I can select what it is. Uh, in my case, it is bill payment and date. I will select, uh, let's say eight, 145. File to attach if I want to uh, have, for example, a remittance if I have or any other documents what I want to provide as a support document to this entry. I can select there and plus add description and I can click create and finish. So in this case, my invoice will be marked as paid. So as we uh, as we can see, I have added three supplier invoices, two are overdue and chocolate limited invoice has been already paid on 8th of July. So this is a way how we can add supplier invoices on uh, free agent accounting software. My quote for two events limited has been approved, but now I need to wrap 200 small chocolates in nice wrapping paper as well as my designed paper. So it's a lot of manual job, but while I will crack on with wrapping small chocolates, uh, what will be used as a thank you gift for event used by Events Limited, how I can actually convert quote to an invoice as well as how I can issue invoices to customers and set up recurring invoice on free agent accounting software. Let's have a look at the next section called work and particularly these two subsections. <sighs> okay, let's wrap up.
So my events limited quote has been approved. So how I can convert quote to an invoice? We need to go back to estimate section. So under work, there is estimates. And from here, I can see that I have status as open for this quote. Click on quote. And now we can mark as approved and convert to an invoice. So when I convert to convert it to an invoice, the quote changed to invoice 001. Okay, here I can create, so mark a send, save as PDF or send by email, or I can edit. So for example, I can see that this invoice has been created on 11 of 7, but actually it, its date should be dated as the 1st of July. So I will click edit. And in this case, I can actually change invoice date to 1st of July. Okay, if you don't want to add discounts and etc., click Save Changes. Now, my invoice date, okay, that's created 11th of 7, but invoice date is 1st of July 2022. Okay, and now I can send by email send email and invoice has been sent out okay if I go back to estimate status open of this quote has been changed to invoiced and if I go to my invoicing section this is very first invoice uh, what has been issued so how we can issue other invoices we can issue invoice by adding new invoice here, I can select a contact. For example, I will select Alex. If it doesn't relate to any project, just leave blank there. Invoice number 002. Invoice date, I will have 1st of July. Payment terms, I would say immediately. You can change still currency if you wish to and add any additional text. Also, I can select that email this invoice automatically using my default template. If you wish to do, select, otherwise do manual sending invoice out, okay? Online payments, if you want to do e-payments or enable e-payments like Stripe and PayPal, you can do it under this section. And there is often, uh, there is of course more options where we can add discount if we wish to, okay? Create new invoice. And from here, to create an invoice, I need to click click on add invoice items. So I have main template of an invoice, but I have no uh, lines for what I'm invoicing uh, Alex for in my case. So add invoice item, I can pre-fill. So I have chocolate large order. So I had 10 of uh, 10, 10 units of, char uh, of large chocolates and income category, I will have chocolate bars, create and add another and also I have uh, small and I had um, 20 small ones, okay, bars and create another, another one and I have post costs as well, shipping, okay, create and finish. So now I have invoice for £42.99. Um, if I do not want to add any other information, I can save as PDF, of course, send the email, edit, delete, and mark this one as recurring as well if I need to. Or I can click mark as send. Okay, so this way how I can add uh, invoice. So if I go to my invoicing, I can see that there is invoice to Alex for $42.99. But how we can issue actually credit notes. So for example, Alex reached out to me and said that $2.99 shouldn't be charged because if orders are above 30 pounds, uh, shipping should be for free. And he's right. So there's two ways how we can issue credit notes. Either we can add a new credit note by clicking on this, or if we go through invoice, we can under actions, create a new credit note. Okay. In that case, there is credit note as in draft status. And now I can only leave the one lines what I want to credit. So large and small, it's fine. Okay, so I'm just clicking crosses and removing lines which shouldn't be charged. Okay. 
or should have been charged. So shipping shouldn't be charged. And this is what I want to keep or leave on this credit note. Okay. And once you're happy, you can download, send to customer, um, still edit or delete completely if you don't want to or do not wish to proceed with credit note. And under more um, options, we can add a new credit note. So I will mark this credit note as um, send out. Okay. And if I go to my invoicing, I can see that there is invoice for $42.99 and credit note for $2.99. So how I can allocate $2.99 to this invoice? So if I click on invoice and actions, I can apply existing credit note, okay? And I will put $2.99, so you can add an amount and click apply credit, okay? So now if I go back to my invoices, Okay, and it's showing that it's been applied against invoice on 11th of 7. So there is only 40 pounds overdue or outstanding for this invoice. So this way how we can apply credit note. So I will add a couple more invoices. Okay, I have added a couple more invoices. So how I can actually add a recurring invoice? To add a recurring invoice, I need to go to recurring invoices section. And here I can add recurring profile. There I can select. So for example, I have Chloe. And Chloe is not on my contact list. So she's completely new customer. I will add a new contact. Okay, and start date of this recurring invoice is on, um, I will select 4th of uh, July. Frequency will happen monthly until she have requested this to happen until end of October. Okay, payment terms provide seven days for her because she's a recurring customer and I can create new profile. Oh, start date. Oh, sorry. Uh, for okay, let's select on 18th. Okay, and create new profile. Okay, now I ha I have a draft of recurring invoice, so I can add invoice items. So this is for medium chocolates. So she requested 10 medium chocolates to be distributed. So this is chocolate bars create and add another one and the same is for large chocolates and she requested 10 as well okay um, okay so she have requested 10 medium chocolates and 10 large chocolates to be distributed to her so once once you have filled in details and you're happy with information click on activate okay so now this invoice is in active status and it starts in my case from 18 july till uh, 31st october okay so when i go back to my recurring invoices so is my recurring invoice if i need to edit click on this edit button and you will be able to change information uh, even on this preset setup sections like invoice details for example or more options if discount is provided or if if i need to change any uh, information like uh, on actual invoice click on that invoice number recurring invoice number and you will be able to actually change this information as well click on make draft status or edit and you will be able to do changes to recurring invoice so this is a way how we can issue invoices to customers as well as set up recurring invoices on a free agent okay so for these receipts i actually have paid for, from my business credit card 
But for these free receipts, I can see that I have paid from my personal credit card. So how I can add expenses on free agent accounting software and mark as paid once these receipts will be paid back to me because I have spent money from my own pocket at the moment. So let's have a look at the next section called expenses. Let's add my free receipt on uh, free agent accounting software. To add these receipts, firstly, I took a pictures and sent to my desktop. So they are available on my folder and I can attach them. So to add expense, I need to go to section called expenses. From here, I can create my very first expense. So firstly, I need to start with attachment. I need to select a file. So I send a picture to my folder. So I have saved in folder. Please note that the maximum file size shouldn't be more than five megabytes. Okay, attachment description. I will add the note saying that it's a receipt, a type, it can be refund or payment. In my case, it is payment and category. This is expense category. So for very first receipt, I purchased envelopes for sending out uh, my chocolates to customers. So it will be part of my cost of sales. And let's find my cost of sales. And it will be under materials. OK. In uh, receipt date is 1st of July. I will keep the same currency. If you have receipt in different currencies, select the one which is uh, applicable. Value is £5.50. VAT, I will select out of scope. I'm not VAT registered business, so I don't keep track of VAT. But if you are VAT registered business, please use the correct VAT rate from your receipt. So for example, here I have 20% VAT. Yeah. So in that case, you will be able to claim that VAT amount from 550, 20% uh, will be claimable towards your part of VAT returns. Yeah. So in my case, I'm not what registered business and I don't kind of care about VAT in this uh, example. Yeah. Description, I have purchased envelopes. Okay. And reference of my invoice is 67215558. Okay. If this expense relates to a particular project, you can allocate it to project. Um, it's my general like envelopes purchased to sending customer orders so it doesn't apply to any of these projects so i will leave it none and if you want to uh, recur this expense or record as a recurring expense you can select from one of options from the drop down list below if it's applicable to your case or to your situation okay so i can create new invoice i can create and add another receipt not invoice expense or cancel so in my case i have still two more receipts to add so i will click create and add another okay yes okay so first expense have been added let's add two more Okay, so all three receipts have been added. So when I go to expenses section, I can see that there is attachments added because there is pin icon. Also the date when I have purchased items and there is a, a description what I have purchased and when, okay? Um, there is how much I have spent and when it will be repaid, this section will be cleared out. So, okay. So this is the way how we can add expenses. And once we are paid from um, 
once we have paid these expenses to employee or for example if i would pay to myself i will cover this one as part of uh, bank reconciliations how we can mark these expenses as paid So I have wrapped two large sized chocolates and they are ready to go to customer and I have still two medium sized chocolates to wrap up. Looks nice, right? So before I send out to customer, I actually need to check if customer have actually paid for this order. And the best way to do it is to reconcile bank account. So let's have a look on next section called banking before I send these chocolates out to customer. Okay, let's go through banking now section. So when I go through banking, I have bank accounts and cash flow. Under bank accounts, I have two bank accounts. So I have business current account and business credit card account. How we can actually upload statements or if you want, you can actually enable automated bank feeds. So for example, when I click on business current account, I can enable bank feeds by clicking on this button and link to my bank and all transactions will be pulled through and all will show up here. Then you will have an option to approve, to mark for approval, manually add it or uh, un under an explain. It. So you, you will filter all transactions based on uh, one by one reviewing it. Okay. But if you decide to upload your bank statements, we can upload our bank statements by clicking upload here. So in my case, I want to upload bank statement firstly for my business current account. So upload statement. And then there are four formats um, confirmed by free agents that can be used um, as a file formats to upload bank statements. Um, if you want to make sure that CSV format uh, is the right uh, formatting used, click on this link, learn more about which bank statement formats free agent uh, support and you will be able to also uh, download template for CSV formats so you can upload and there is no issues um, on uploading file for example um, there is no headers or there shouldn't be headers when you upload CSV files that is a one of the points okay I downloaded my template and uh, I aligned my bank statement to match with CSV format files but there is also OFX, QBO and QIF uh, files what you can uh, use to upload on manually on uh, free agent. Okay, so to upload once you have got your statement aligned or in one of those formats, select a file. In my case, I will have um, business. So my Rita's bank and I will have business account. Okay. And click open. And now I have option to upload statement. Okay. System is uploading. You can see by this setting thing running. Okay. And there is 11 transactions was uploaded and I can click on review my transactions. If you don't want to review your your transactions uh, straight away you can always go to any other section and when you come back to banking bank accounts and when you click on this for example in my case i have business current account i will have option to now go through one by one and decide what to do below the table there is explanation of what these colors mean so for example green it means that it's been explained so that means that there been already available uh, invoice on system what can be allocated this question mark is unexplained so if i will need to go manually select or record that transaction and purple ones are manually added so for example if i marked my for example chocolate supplier invoice as paid that will show up in this statement already but we will be able to lock uh, or 
um, if I have, for example, chocolate I have above, I will be able to actually um, like link so this is the same transaction so you do not need to delete transactions there's the easiest way to do okay so let's start from the top local shop limited for 35 pounds if this is a payment by uh, uh, let's say um, by visa card so you have paid with visa card and you have a invoice or receipt available we can actually instead of adding supplier bill we can add a payment and attach support document and confirm this payment uh, from our web bank reconciliation so what i mean by this one instead of adding information here we can click on more options and from more options we have an option to add a details below here so for example select type it if it is if i have already supplier invoice added on system i can select a bill payment but if it's like a like cash payment no okay not cash payment but it's like a expense payment which shouldn't be maybe not added on um, free agent account so we can do like a, we want to do as a like quick expense so we can leave this one as a payment okay 35 pounds VAT I will select out of scope doesn't apply to me and I can select a category. So in my case, this is uh, materials for cost of sales. Okay, and description is local shop. Link to project doesn't apply. And if I have receipt number, I can add here. So for example, I have invoice number. So I can local shop one, two, three, four. And I can select a file. So support document for this local shop. Uh, payment so there is my invoice for this payment i can add the details so for example i can add uh, okay and i can create a new explanation now my local shop has been posted on system this entry has been reconciled and also i have attached a support document Bill payment, when I click on bill play payment, it has already allocated my supplier invoice automatically to this um, entry. So it's why it's ticked in green. So system automatically found an information. Jane, if I click on Jane, I can actually um, select an invoice and there is multiple invoices available. So I can select Jane and explain transaction. Okay, and it's been marked as paid. Chloe, so in my case, I have only Lucy two invoices left as in issued invoices. So if I select from drop down list, I can actually this income mark as sales. So Chloe paid in my bank account, but it was a sale, um, like quick sale or sale in a uh, local market. So I can create as a sale transaction category. I will select chocolate bars. If you just have sales category, allocate it to sales category, okay? And I will leave a description as Chloe. I can add a support document. For example, if I have separate receipt book, if I'm issuing to customers who are paying maybe in cash or any other ways, and I can click on explain transaction. And this has been marked as paid and also 28 pounds will be added to my sales or revenue or income on profit and loss statement okay phone bill has been marked as paid lucy green so it's 250 and it is invoice receipt but i have two invoices so i have one for 160 and i have another one for 90. so i will click more options in this case it is invoice receipt and I have 160 create an explanation okay and um, okay so let's go to my um, work invoicing and we'll mark these invoices as paid from actual invoices. So actions, add manual bank transaction, invoice receipt, 
and paid um, I think so it was on first okay 90 create and finish okay so it's marked paid on 1st July and let's go to invoicing again and mark second invoice as paid as well so invoice 004 actions and manual bank transaction and let's select on first right and finish so paid on first 07 so when I go back to my bank account current business account okay there is two receipts which need to go against this Lucy's invoice okay more options and I can select now okay use selected entry more options and I can allocate second use selected entry okay so now there is two receipts allocated to uh, Lucy's one payment so this this is way how we can do if I have two invoices paid at one go we need to mark as paid um, our invoices as paid first and then allocate one by one it creates like a split payment yeah okay next one I have expenses other at 26 so this is expense payment so that is expense payment for free receipts what I have added under expenses so here are my free receipts for 26 pound so if I go to bank account my current account and to reconciliation so under expenses I need to select type as money paid to user okay and it's to myself category expense payment expenses and explain transaction okay so expense payment is marked as 26 and if i go to expenses section there is expenses payment recorded as repaid and there is nothing left to be paid so there was 26 pounds total to be paid for expenses incurred and 26 were paid so there is nothing outstanding okay so there was what else was left to us okay events limited 550 if I go to more options there is only 145 for payment going out and there is no um, invoice for from invoice issued to events limited so I can add this one as um, uh, doo -doo -doo. okay I will add this one as other money in and now let's do invoice receipt it will not allow I want to mark as payment on account okay I will mark this one as um, sales that we have received payment but I will add a custom order for events limited and create new explanation okay and chocolate limited this is bill payment and I can select okay more options so because I already marked chocolate bill as paid I need to actually mark this one or select and click use selected entry so if I go back there is purple what I manually added as a payment and there is a bank reconciliation entry in red so they are both 445 so to instead of deleting this line click on chocolate limited on or question mark click on more options and use selected entry this is that purple entry and that transaction will be linked and purple entry will turn in green and red entry will disappear okay so now I have all transactions reconciled as you can see this is in green okay 
So how we can actually work around with credit cards? So for example, if I have business credit card, I will upload statement. We can actually, instead of adding expenses, but if I have separate credit card, business credit card account, I can actually create entries with attached support documents already on uh, free agent accounting software. So I will upload statement and I will show you how we can do it. Okay, I will click review my transactions. So I have these transactions which need to be marked as paid. So for example, I have ePay, KCA. So I have paid with my credit card. When I click on this one, I can select if this is payment or what uh, or any other sections like falling under. In my case, this is pure payment. There is no recorded transaction under expenses or bills. So I can actually record transaction for this one. VAT, I will select is out of scope. Category, in my case, this one is materials, part of cost of sales. So I will select cost of sales. Description will leave the same. And I can upload a statement for 40 pounds, not statement, receipt. And I have receipt for 40 pounds here. And I'm calling as a stationery because it's part of cost of sales to uh, make my products uh, wrapped up and sent out. So that's like foil and wrapping paper and etc. Okay. And I can click explain transaction. Okay, this has been already marked as uh, reconciled and there is attached file. Let's click on Mills Limited. This is payment. I will click out of scope, what doesn't apply to me. And in my case, this one is Mills, uh, so accommodation and Mills. I can upload a file. So I have file for Mills here. So that's my support document and save changes. Okay, parking the same way. This is a payment, so it's my credit card payment. It is part of travel. I will upload file. Okay, so system have already posted by system like free agent already read information that this is fuel and they have already allocated to area where it's need to be posted but just double check information uh, making sure that it is recorded correctly in correct category and plus add support documents so it's easier for you at a later time to go back and look at that particular receipt or support document Okay, and food limited, I will select out of scope. And this food limited is actually as well costs of sales. And I will upload file. And explain transaction. Okay, so this is a way how we can quickly reconcile credit card transactions allocate to correct cost categories as well as attach support documents so every time when you will come back to your credit card statement you will be able to actually see um, your transactions and when you click for example i will click on food limited you can actually download original uh, uploaded receipt for this transaction simple and easy so when i go to my bank account these are my balances, so I will still need to pay my credit card from my business current account. Um, so if I want, I can add also PayPal account and any other accounts if I wish to. So if I click on business current account, I have a couple more options to do. I can still enable bank feeds. I can edit details of my bank account and under more section, I can add transaction. I can Undo last uploads 
I can guess rules so you can actually set up rules for example if on monthly basis you have bank fees you can set up um, rules so system recognizes it and automatically confirms so it should be like marked in a green or I can also delete account if I want to do so okay so if I add a transaction for example uh, payment or transfer to another account so in my case I will select transfer to another account I can select date and for example 182.50 I think so was my credit card and I can select to which account I want to transfer money so if I have multiple bank accounts I can select between which accounts I'm doing money transfers okay I can attach a support document if I wish to and I can create and finish Okay, so my transaction has been added here. So when I will upload bank statement, next bank statement, I will be able to reconcile this transaction. So if I go back to my bank accounts, okay, I missed by a couple of pences. So there's still 15 uh, pence. I have transferred more than was amount on my credit card uh, statement. Okay, so this is a way how we can reconcile our bank accounts how we can add additional bank statements uh, upload bank statements and add additional bank accounts if we have for example euro account uh, or maybe dollar accounts it can be created by clicking on new and selected one of those options um, there is another uh, uh, section called cash flow so if you want to see cash flow of uh, money between money movements how your money moves in account you can click on cash flow and below there is predictions and view invoices bank accounts bills there's more details to go through if you want to know like more information about uh, this section so yeah this cover section called banking this is last order of this week and it is my melted chocolate with seeds and raisins looks good right so all what i need to do is just to break in pieces and pack nicely in bags and pass to customer and customer actually will come in next hour so i need to actually crack on also on another side while i was taking this um, chocolate out of the fridge i actually thought how i can check my performance how well actually my business is doing and I know that on free agents there is a separate section called accounting where I can actually check my reports and if I need to do any adjustments I can use a journal entries. Amazing, right? Plus, if I am a sole trader and I am sole trader, so my business type is sole trader, there is a separate section called taxes where I can see my self-assessments when my time will do to submit those. So let's have a look on these two sections, taxes and accounting on free agent accounting software. Let's have a look at taxes and accounting sections. So under taxes, we can access self-assessment um, information so because my tax year haven't finished you you will be not able to do a lot as I'm not able to do a lot I think what I can see is my tax year and my tax date so my date is from 6th April 2022 till 5th April 2023 this is my tax year and total tax due nothing is there because tax year haven't finished yet okay so under taxes we'll be able to access self-assessment if you are sole trader okay under accounting we have two subsections called reports and journal entries so let's have a look at reports first so i'm as i'm sole trader and i selected that my report should be on cash basis that means when i spend money or when i receive money that's when it should show up it doesn't matter when invoices are issued or when invoices are recorded on system so shouldn't be showing up so let's check let's have a look so first is my profit and loss statement okay let's check how well i have done how i made profit or maybe i have made a loss in this past period so Profit and loss statement. 
have option to select monthly, quarterly, yearly or comparative. Let's look at monthly, uh, monthly breakdown. OK, so first one is turnover known as sales, income or revenue. You can call how you want. OK, so my turnover is 2093 in a period, which is great. And there is three pounds in sales. OK. To see what falls under this category, I can click on sales and I can see that actually invoice receipt for 278 have been gone under um, my sales section. So if I click here, I can see that 278 from Alex invoice have been moved under sales section. Okay. So we can correct 278 i will note it down we will be able to correct using journal entries okay so let's go back to reports and click on profit and loss statement so next one i have sales chocolate bars and customer orders so the biggest chunk on my sales what i have made is from custom orders and 1200 is actually from events limited here received the money in and there is 550 was from events limited paid amount and i had no invoice for that um, for this entry but once i will issue uh, invoice i will need to go and reconcile events limited and allocate this payment okay so let's go back to that section. So next one is less cost of sales. So I have spent 819 on cost of sales and on materials 41 pounds. So actually in cash I have spent for purchasing ingredients and uh, packing, packing material uh, for uh, selling my chocolates. OK, and then there is another section called admin expenses. So I can actually narrow down this one. So my turnover is 2.1 and 0.9 almost is my cost of sales admin expenses all is under 300 pounds and majority is actually coming out from rent but then there is also office costs mobile phone motor expenses accommodation and meals postage and travel so if you click on every of these section it will show when this uh, payment has been going, going out from my account okay so when we go to reports and look under balance sheet, this would show how much money actually I should have on, on my uh, account. So firstly, there is deferred costs of 201. To see what falls under deferred costs, when I click on it, I can see what makes up 201 pound. Okay, so if I go back and look under trade debtors, 150 pounds, this were 155 pounds is actually invoice number 007 and this is invoice what has been issued on 11 so this money has been not received yet and it is deposit uh, payment request from josh for uh, actually for project job what been set up for 500 pounds okay so let's go again back to balance sheets then under li liabilities there is deferred income and trade creditors uh, as well we can click on this information and there is information provided in details and most likely 275 is made up from very last bills local shop for 8826 and chocolate limited for 100 almost 13 pounds okay and there is also suspense account, thousand pounds, and that is my opening balance for my bank account when I opened or started my business operations. So that will go under suspense account. It's like kind of loan, which possibly will need to be repaid back to me because I invested into business to start up my chocolate business. And retained profit, it's 944. That is my profit from profit and loss statement. Okay. Also, if you want, you can uh, check performance benchmarking. That means that how your business uh, benchmarks in an industry overall. So you can select this one, which is very good for free agent to provide. Also, we can look at next section called breakdown. 
we are able to see age debtors and age creditors so age debtors who haven't paid us so in my case josh haven't paid 150 and he need to actually pay because it's overdue already and there is invoice number provided so when i would click on this one it will direct me directly to an um, invoice instead of going back to section i can actually click on this drop down list and i can look on age creditors on age creditors this is list of who i own money who i haven't paid and i haven't paid to chocolate and local shop and it is actually already due for a payment as well next one we have capital assets so if you have capital assets this will be a list where you will be able to see all assets what is purchased and you have declared as a capital in your business next one is customer sales that is breakdown by customers so by events limited lucy alex and jane this is like based on the customers next one is spending categories that's where i have spent actually money so the most i have spent on cost of sales so purchasing ingredients for making my chocolates um, and then there is 150 for rent then materials like packing materials where i pack my chocolates that's 41 pound so this shows a breakdown about uh, expenses and then there is also detailed information section called show transactions trial balance and audit trail so if i will click on show transactions and select an account so for example chocolate bars this would show all transactions under this particular sales category and if i click on sales there is this 278 on sales which should be actually part of uh, chocolate bars code so how we can use journals to correct these transactions so under accounting there is journal entries and to add a new journal entry click on here journal description i will uh, add um, sales correction date i will leave on 11th so code this is what i want to correct so in my case it will be sales so from drop down list i can select sales or you can start type typing in and it will provide code so i want to remove from sales 278 i can add information i will call it miss posted to sales okay and because sales when it's posted it's actually in credit so i want to balance out so i need to put 278 in debit side i will i want to move 278 to my chocolate bars sales code it's the same i will keep the same um, additional information or description and 278 need to be on credit side so it's need to it's need needs to be balanced in balance so there is difference of 278 minimum every journal should have two rows but if for example you are posting wages journal then there might be more than two lines so add another line by clicking here as many as you want for journal entries okay once you have added or filled in uh, fields and you are happy how journal looks like click on create journal okay so journal has been added under actions you can edit still these journal entries copy to new journal reverse or delete these journal entries so if i go back to my reports and click on my profit and loss statement let's click on yearly under sales there is nothing showing up here so i have moved transactions to chocolate bars so if i click on sales there is journal entry called mis posted to sales and it removes out uh, from um, like reduces credit by offsetting with debit entry so this way how we can add journal entries if required as well as how you can see if you have actually made a profit or maybe a loss in a certain period and this covers actually all uh, free agent accounting software tutorial so guys 
I hope you enjoyed watching my free agent accounting software tutorial. But if you have any questions or require any further advice, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Oh, let's go for dark chocolate.